So hi everyone and a very good morning to all of you. Welcome back once again to another session of PIB 247. In today's class, we'll be talking about uh, the PIB news from 23rd to 24th of March 2023. All right, so without any delay guys, let's begin with the class and let's talk about the very first question which says National Center for Sustainable Coastal Management, right? National Center for Sustainable Coastal Management is a research, once again, let me change the color of the pen. Okay, I think it is not changing. All right, no problem. So National Center for Sustainable Coastal Management is a research institution which supports the protection, conservation, restoration, management and whatnot for the coasts. So which ministry, uh, you know, under which ministry does it function, right? So let's talk about why it is in news. Then we will talk about this uh, National Center and then we'll answer this question. So remember, recently Union Environment Minister, Mr. Bhupendra Yadav uh, has chaired the first general body meeting of National Center for Sustainable Coastal Management, right? So when we are talking about coastal, the minister can be either two of the ministries. Number one is Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and number two is Ministry of Port, Shipping and Waterways. So in this case, the ministry is Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, all right? So now talking about this National uh, Center for Sustainable Coastal Management, remember guys, it was launched, it was established in the year 2011 to promote sustainable coast, right? As the name says, sustainable coastal management, which means the objective is to promote the sustainable coast. Now, how this sustainable coast is being promoted by this organization? Through increased partnership, conservation practices, scientific research and development, knowledge management for, for benefit and well-being, of the current and the future generations, right? It is located, the headquarters are in Chennai, in Tamil Nadu, parent ministry, that's Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. And remember, it is a research institution which, which does research to support the protection, conservation, restoration, management and policy advice on coast, right? Basically, it, it do not implements, it, it does not implements the, the program or any policy or initiative. It is basically a research institution which gives advice on how we can protect, conserve, restore, manage and what are the policy advice to, pro uh, you know, to promote the sustainable coast. All right. So that is all about it. And it works under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. And that's why option B is the correct answer. Let's talk about question number two. Then where has the communication minister's conclave been recently organized under the theme Enabling innovation in telecommunication to ensure digital transformation of the society. Remember this communication minister's conclave, it recently took place in New Delhi. The objective was to provide opportunities to startups, MSMEs and Indian telecom stakeholders to meet prospective overseas buyers. Right. So basically, when we have this conclave, hote hai na, so, uh, try to, don't try to remember the objectives word by word. When we are talking about communication minister's conclave, so, we must be talking about the area of communication. We must be talking about the area of telecom, right? So for giving a boost to that area, that conclave has been organized. Ye general idea hota hai, uh, of identifying objective of any particular conference, conclave, right? Anything like that. The theme was enabling innovation in telecommunications to ensure digital transformation of the society. Participants ki baat wahi hai, sare communication minister the aur jo bhi senior government officials hai, so, बस यहाँ पे important ये है कि कुछ events यहाँ पे launch हुए थे, कुछ app, कुछ initiative launch हुए थे. That is something which is important. Number one, 17th India Telecom 2023 has been announced, which is an international business expo, and which is organized by Telecom Equipment and Services Export Promotion Council. Right? Then there is an app which was launched. UN Wayfinder Navigational Mobile App was launched, and it has been developed by C Dot, right? Center for Development of Telematics. Center for Development of Telematics to enable users uh, to find their ways in various blocks and buildings and floors of United Nations buildings in Geneva, right? Rasta Batane Keli of the United Nations building. Ka. Bharat 6G vision document has been launched along with 6G testbed project. And last but not the least, there is a mobile app called Before You Dig. It has been launched. Now, Call Before You Dig app has been launched for preventing damage to underlying assets, right? Underlying matlab, zameen ke niche, beneath the earth. Right, beneath the uh, earth kelo, yeah, kelo surface, beneath the surface. So it is a tool and by uh, for preventing uh, damage to underlying assets like 
ऑप्टिकल फाइबर केबल्स दैट अकर्स बिकॉज ऑफ अनकोर्डिनेटेड डिगिंग एंड एक्सकवेशन अब हमारे देश में क्या है कोई भी आता है कहीं पे भी गड्ढा खोद के चल देता है राइट सो टू प्रिवेंट दैट और उससे क्या होता है नीचे जो तारे होती हैं वो डैमेज हो सकती है ऑप्टिकल फाइबर्स है गैस पाइप लाइन है वाटर पाइप लाइन है होता ही होगा अगर आप किसी एक नॉट सो रिच सोसाइटी में नहीं रहते हैं तो नॉट सो रिच सोसाइटी में रहते हैं तो वहां पे आप देख सकते होंगे कि गलियों में कभी भी आके कोई भी आके गड्ढा खोद के चल देता है एंड उससे जो भी डैमेज हो रहा है उससे किसी को कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ रहा सो टू कंट्रोल दैट दिस कॉल बिफोर यू डेक मोबाइल ऐप हैज बिन लॉन्च एंड दिस मोबाइल ऐप बेसिकली विल कनेक्ट एक्सकवेटर एंड एसेट ओनर्स राइट थ्रू एस एम एस और ई मेल नोटिफिकेशन एंड क्लिक टू कॉल सो दैट देर आर प्लान एक्सकवेशन इन द कंट्री वाइल इंश्योरिंग दी एसेट्स विच आर लाइंग अंडरग्राउंड ओके ensuring the safety of assets right so this this is all and this communication ministers conclave took place in new delhi option d is the correct answer let's move ahead to question number 3 with this which ministry is leading india in the second negotiating round of indo pacific economic framework for prosperity in bali indonesia so this was the second negotiating round of ipef indo pacific economic framework for prosperity and this this took place in bali right this took place in bali and it was led by ministry of commerce and industry from india side right ministry of commerce and industry and ministry of commerce and industry is headed by uh, which minister which person it's mr piyush goel who is also the leader in rajya sabha all right now discussion during the uh, bali uh, bali round basically uh, was around all the four uh, pillars of ipef which are trade supply chains clean economy and fair economy right uh, fair economy and yeah india was only the part of uh, the discussions related to pillar 2 to 4 because india is not a part of pillar first pillar that is the trade right now talking about ipef in detail we have discussed about this so many times but theek hai aap mein se kuch log pehli baar aaye honge meri video ko dekhne ke liye so it is for them remember ipef indo pacific indo pacific economic framework for prosperity as the name says it is a framework for prosperity in the indo pacific region right now how prosperity can be achieved by economic coordination right by social coordination by environmental coordination and what not so to contribute to cooperation stability prosperity development and peace within the intro indo pacific region is the objective it was launched last year and it is basically an economic initiative launched by united states president joe biden and always remember that it is not a free trade agreement it is not a free trade agreement right बेसिकली इसमें क्या है सब एक दूसरे का सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं द मेंबर्स ऑफ दिस फ्रेमवर्क आर सपोर्टिंग ईच अदर्स राइट सो बेसिकली वी कैन मेंटेन द प्रोस्पेरिटी इन द इंडो पैसिफिक रीजन राइट दैट इज देशर ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस एंड देर आर फोर्टीन पार्टनर्स इन आई पी एफ विच कलेक्टिवली रिप्रेजेंट फोर्टी परसेंट ऑफ ग्लोबल जी डी पी एंड ट्वेंटी एट परसेंट ऑफ ग्लोबल गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज ट्रेड राइट एंड देर आर फोर पिलर्स ऑफ आई पी एफ जो हमने पहले ही पढ़ लिया है ट्रेड सप्लाई चेंज क्लीन इकोनॉमी एंड फेयर इकोनॉमी एंड दीज थ्री India is a part of these three supply chains, clean economy, and fair economy, and not of the trade. All right. So yeah, that is all. And which ministry led India? So that's Ministry of Commerce and Industry, headed by Piyush Goel. Option B is the correct answer. Question number four: Which ministry has launched Green Tug transition program to reduce transport carbon emission? So what is a tug? First of all, uh, so you can uh, see here in this image. This is a big ship. राइट right? एक छोटे छोटे जो टग्स होते हैं छोटे छोटे जो शिप्स होते हैं दैट पुल्स दैट पुल दिस बिग शिप टू द हार्बर और टू द कोस्ट ठीक है दीज आर नोन एट टग नाउ व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ ग्रीन टग ग्रीन टग इज दैट व्हिच इज पावर्ड बाय ग्रीन एनर्जी और यू कैन से व्हिच इज पावर्ड बाय ग्रीन फ्यूल दैट इज नोन एज ग्रीन टग सो दिस ग्रीन टग प्रोग्राम ग्रीन टग ट्रांजिशन प्रोग्राम हैज बीन लॉन्च्ड बाय मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ पोर्ट शिपिंग एंड वाटर वेज टू रिड्यूस टू रिड्यूस व्हाट टू रिड्यूस ट्रांसपोर्ट कार्बन एमिशंस एंड मेक इंडिया a global hub for green shipping by 2030 remember it was launched during india's first you know during inauguration of india's first national center of excellence in green port and shipping which was inaugurated in gurugram in haryana right this is also very important right here are two important things green tug program green tug program is for developing the green tugs right and green tugs ka matlab clear hai the the tugs which will be operate on green energy or green fuel right and this green tug program was launched when during the inauguration of india's first center of excellence in green port and shipping and which was inaugurated in where gurugram in haryana all right and under it green hybrid tugs will be introduced which will be powered by green hybrid prop uh, propulsion systems which i already told you the target is that 
you know the target is to initial green tugs to start working in all major ports by 2025 and at least 50 percent of all the tugs are likely to be converted into the green tugs by the year 2030 those are these at least 50 percent of the tugs uh, that will be green tugs right now talking about this national center of excellence for uh, green ports and shipping so remember it is uh, it has been launched in collaboration by the Ministry of Port Shipping and Waterways in collaboration with the Energy and Resources Institute, which in short is TERI, right? Which in short is what? TERI. It will engage in developing the regulatory framework and alternative technology adoption roadmap for green shipping in India. So that's very basic. And it is located in the TERI complex, which is in Gurugram in Haryan. So that is all about it. And which ministry is this? Of course, that's the Ministry of Port Shipping and Waterways. Option A is the correct answer. Question number five. Where will the Ministry of Tourism be organizing the country's first Global Tourism Investor Summit in May 2023 as an initiative under India's G20 Presidency? So the first uh, Global Tourism Investor Summit. So the first Global Tourism Investor Summit to, will take place in New Delhi in the month of in New Delhi in the month of May 2023 and it will provide a common platform for interactions between global and domestic players and it will also help in exploring the investment opportunities in Indian travel and hospitality sector. All right. It will be organized in partnership with Invest India and CII with Invest India being investment promotion and facilitation partner and CII being industry partner. All right. So that is all. Baki jab ye hoga, iske baare mein agar kuch acha detail aata hai, uh, relevant for the examination then we'll discuss this also right so it will take place in new delhi option e is the correct answer question number six which digitized claim settlement module of national crop insurance portal has been recently launched by ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare under pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana very very important question i believe this question is <coughs> has a huge chance of appearing in the examination so the name of the portal which has been launched by ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare for speedy dispersal of claims to insured farmers under Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana is known as what? Digi claim, right? And remember, <clears throat> it has been launched at the National Crop Insurance Portal and it will basically automate the claim settlement process to ease all the insured farmers' lives and provide them with a sustainable financial flow and support, right? Basically, what will happen? The, the, the insured amount. If any farmer wants to claim the insured amount, that claim amount will directly go into the bank account of the farmers without any hassle, right? So that is why it has been uh, launched. And remember, there is an integration of national crop insurance portal and public financial management system for effective implementation of this DG claim. And currently it has been made operational in six states, which are Rajasthan, UP, Himachal Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Uttarakhand and Haryana. So initially it has been launched in six states, but of course it will be launched in future in all the states, right? So Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Uttarakhand and Haryana is the correct answer. So DG claim is the correct answer guys to this question option D. Moving ahead to question number seven, what is the name of real time performance monitoring dashboard which has been launched recently by Ministry of Port Shipping and Waterways. So I think it is nothing but real time performance monitoring dashboard, right? It will monitor the real time performance of the various departments of the Ministry of Port Shipping and Waterway and its name is Sagar Manthan, right? What is the name? Sagar Manthan is the name and of course it has been launched for digitalization and bringing transparency in the maritime transport sector and how it will bring transparency because it will uh, monitor the real-time performance of various departments of Ministry of Port Shipping and Waterways, all right? And remember it has been developed in-house by the Ministry of Port Shipping and Waterways. These are some of the features of this uh, dashboard, data visualization, real-time monitoring, improved communication, data-driven decision-making and increased accountability. All right. So yeah, Sagar Manthan is the correct answer guys to this question option D. And now let's talk about question number eight, which of the following ministry is implementing global engagement scheme with an aim to promote the rich and diverse culture of India abroad, right? So this is. Uh, when we are talking about promoting the rich and diverse culture, the ministry must be the Ministry of Culture, which is headed by Mr. G. Kishan Reddy, who is the minister, G. Kishan Reddy, who is also the Minister of Tourism. All right. 
So global engagement scheme is being implemented by Ministry of Agriculture to promote Indian folk arts and culture abroad. And uh, before this, initially the scheme was known as Scheme for Promotion of International Cultural Relations, but now it is known as Global Engagement Scheme. It has three components. Number one, Festival of India. Festival of India, which promotes India's rich cultural heritage and enhance India's image in the global arena. Second component, uh, granting aid to Indo-Foreign Friendship Cultural Society schemes, under which the ministry is giving the financial assistance to the cultural societies, which are actively uh, promoting Indian cultures abroad. Okay. And then the contribution grant to international organizations and delegation, which is for India's contribution towards membership of international organization like ICROM, UNESCO, World Heritage Fund, whatever are the uh, international organizations which are concerned with the culture thing. So, unko contribution grant data diya jata hai under this particular scheme. Okay. So, which ministry is this? That's Ministry of Culture. Option C is the correct answer. And now let's move ahead to the questions in short, which do not need much explanation. But before that, if you want to have the PDF of this session, you can join this Telegram channel. The link is in description. And if you want to ask anything related to examination, you can follow me here. Question number nine. Which mobile app has been launched by income tax department uh, uh, to facilitate taxpayer to view their information as available in annual information statement or taxpayer information summary. The name of the mobile app is very direct. This is AIS for taxpayer app and AIS of course here stands for annual information statement. So option E is the correct answer. What is the answer? Option E. Okay. Question number 10. Which ministry has organized used water management in small cities on the occasion of World Water Day 2023, which was observed on 22nd of March, right? And I all, uh, already told you this thing so many times, wherever you see this word cities, right? Smart cities, small cities, big cities, right? Uh, so the ministry will be the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, which is headed by Mr. Hardeep Singh Puri. And he is also the Minister of Petroleum and Natural Gas. All right. Question number 11. Where will the second tourism working group meeting of G20 under India's presidency uh, be held? Where will the second tourism working group meeting? So first one took place in Gujarat. And where in Gujarat? At run of Kutch. At run of Kutch. And second one will take place in Siluguri in West Bengal. Option B is the correct answer. National Steel Policy 2017 aims to achieve a steel production capacity of how many million tons by 2030? Right. And remember, this data is based on parliamentary reply given by the Ministry of Steel, right, in the parliament. So this is totally, completely based on the parliamentary reply, which I believe is true, right? Because parliament is the prime area where government gives, presents its data. So the target is 600 million tons. And option E, that is why is the correct answer. Option E, guys, is the correct answer to this question. 600 million ton. Question number 13, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change has launched. Oh, no, one second. No, that's not 600 million ton. That's 300 million ton. I beg your pardon. So let me repeat this. Let me repeat this and let me first. Okay. So National Steel Policy 2017 aims to achieve a steel production capacity of 300 million tons by 2030 and not 600 million ton. Forget about this. Forget about this. That's 300 million ton, 300 million ton. Okay. Question number 13. Pe aajate, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change has launched National Clean Air Program in 2019 with an improve, with the aim to improve air quality in how many cities, uh, which are non-attainment cities and million plus cities in 24 states and UTs. Do remember that 131 states located in 24 states and UTs are under the implementation under this program. So option A, 131 is the correct answer. And guys, the last question for today with which PSQ has the Minister of Defense signed contract worth over 2800 crores to the supply of indigenously developed medium power radars, which are named as Arudra, right? What is the name? Arudra. Do remember the name as well. Name can be asked in phase one, Arudra. To Indian Air Force. So this PSU is Bharat Electronics Limited and option B is the correct answer. All right, guys. So that is all for today. I hope all the questions and their explanations are clear. If you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. Take care and God bless.